Hey, it's Danny from Conscious Calisthenics. So something that I'm very knowledgeable on is a weight loss and obesity. And I wanted to talk about a specific thing in relation to this topic. And that is why the Thai people that live in their own country, Thailand, are just getting more and more obese over the years because this is a huge issue that is going on here. And I am someone that's lived in Thailand for over five years, and my girlfriend actually came to Thailand back in 2002, so she has even more of a personal experience of where she saw how Thai people's physiques used to be way, way back. So, something I have noticed with my own eyes is that over the years, there is more and more obese people in Thailand. Obviously, there's Westerners that are obese as well, but we're focusing specifically on Thai native people. So if you then do your own research, as you can see here, over the years, the obesity rates in Thailand have just kept going up and up and up and up and up up and it doesn't seem to be going down whatsoever and in asia they are the second highest country in asia with obesity so number one is actually malaysia and you may be thinking well why is this going on and a lot of people just think it's due to genetic reasons which that's a load of crap because if it was due to genetic reasons there would have been way more obese people in the past in Thailand, so that debunks that fully. So, what has changed over the years that has sent so many more people in Thailand getting obesity? Well, it's very, very simple. The Western world has influenced Thailand massively over the years, and guess what has come along with that? There is so many different massive corporate companies that are food companies that are selling processed junk food that is not healthy for anyone in any way, shape or form. So in most places in Thailand now, you can find McDonald's, left, right and centre, you can find Subways, Burger King, Pizza Hut, the list just goes on and on and on for the fast food chains that you can find that you can buy loads of junk food at. But then you've got 7-Eleven everywhere, which is a convenience store, and pretty much everything in there is processed food. And then you have Tesco's, you have Rimping, which is similar to Walmart, and you've got Macro, which is similar to Walmart as well. And pretty much everything is processed food in there as well. So there is just an abundance of processed food everywhere that did not used to be in Thailand in an abundance. And as the years go on, there's just more and more different processed food. So that is the reason why the Thai people are getting fat, because with these processed foods, they are very, very high in calories compared to the food that Thai people have eaten for a very, very long time before these foods were even in their country. Because when you actually look at the slimmer Thai people that don't eat loads of processed junk food, they normally eat very, very small portions and it's normally rice with a small amount of meat and a small amount of vegetables. And the amount they eat in one sitting, like for me, it's not even a snack because I'm someone that works out a lot. I have a high percentage of muscle on my body. I have a low body fat percentage and I'm just very active and busy throughout my day. So my calorie expenditure is very high. So for me, it's just not something that's sustainable for me. I would say that most Thai people that eat the way that they have done for a very long time normally don't consume more than 1,000 to 1,500 calories. And guess what? When you're in such a calorie deficit, you just are not going to store any food as excess fat on your body. It's as simple as that. But if you then go and compare a McDonald's meal, especially if it's like large or king size, it doesn't even have to be super sized, for example, it's giving you so many calories. You could be easily in 2,000 calories within one meal. And then most people are obviously not intermittent fasting. They're eating multiple meals throughout the day. And then they're consuming more calories than they're burning. And then it is stored as body fat which is really good from a survival point of view, because if you're in your natural habitat and you've got that stored energy on your body, 
and then you don't have access for food for a long time, so you're in a fasted state, your body is gonna use up that stored energy as fuel, so that's a really good thing. But in today's world, such as in Thailand, people aren't normally having that go on. They're not in their natural habitat anymore. Most people are not fasting that, as I just mentioned a short while ago. So they're just consistently eating these things over a period of time where they're in a severe calorie surplus, and then they're just getting more and more obese. It's really as simple as that. And alongside that, diabetes rates are going up, heart disease, so many different health issues are just going up and up and up and up. And the only way that that can be resolved is by people eating in the way that they used to eat. It's really, really that simple. And there was a documentary done by a man, and the documentary is called Me So Hungry, where he's an American that pretty much just ate processed and junk food his whole life, never really worked out at all. And they wanted to do an experiment with him. So he went to Japan for 12 weeks. And the rules for this documentary to see the effect that the native diet would have on him. He had to eat like the local people for 12 weeks. He was only gonna drink water or green tea. He was only gonna eat with chopsticks because if you're not aware, when you actually eat with chopsticks, you obviously can't pick up as much food unlike with a spoon or a fork. So when you're eating a meal, you're actually gonna get full a lot sooner than if you've got big spoonfuls of food because your body is actually getting more time to actually register when it's full because when you're taking big amounts of food at a time are really really rushing it stops a hormone known as leptin from being induced within you sooner so then you can easily overeat and then you can feel really really stuffed and then leptin starts to go up and then you start to feel full but when you're eating small amounts it's going to get induced way sooner because you're eating way slower and then your body can actually register when you're actually full rather than when you're over full, so to speak. So with this whole experiment, they took all his biomarkers and he found that he did start to lose weight. And all of his biomarkers at the end of the test that he did with himself just massively, massively improved because he stopped eating all of that calorie dense westernized processed food. And the thing is, when you're eating more whole foods, it's way, way harder to eat as many calories. The first reason is, is because it's way more micronutrient rich in specific vitamins and minerals and other different nutrients, which will make you feel fuller way, way sooner, unlike junk food that doesn't have a lot of those things in it. And just as a whole, whole foods is just way more nourishing and just way more filling due to so many different reasons. So it's way harder to overeat on whole foods. Try and eat 3,000 calories worth of junk food in a day or 4,000 or 5,000 calories worth, and then try and do that with whole foods. And I can pretty much guarantee you're normally gonna eat like 50% less calories in comparison to junk food when you are eating mostly whole foods. And the brilliant thing with this man that did this experiment after this 12 week experiment in Japan, which he actually did his research and found that Japan has some of the lowest obesity rates in the world and heart disease rates and diabetes and many other different health issues and symptoms. So they are known as some of the healthiest people in the world and some of the people that have the most optimal longevity as well, highest rates of longevity. So yeah, after this experiment, he went back to America and he kept eating in a very similar way and he continued to lose weight and ended up losing 25 kilos, which is a lot of weight because this man was a very, very heavy person and he'd been obese for a very, very long time. And he tried many different things to lose the weight, but never found anything that was actually sustainable. So it was amazing that he did the experiment and found something that was actually sustainable so he could actually get real results that he could actually keep over a long period of time. Oh, and one last thing that I think it'd be very good to mention is with junk food that is processed, these companies are very, very clever. 
they add a lot of sugar in and a lot of fat in, which makes the food very tasty and very addictive. Then it's normally got a lot of MSG in it, known as monosodium glutamate, which makes it way easier to eat way more food. But then what you normally find with these foods, even though they taste like wow, because they've added so many things that enhance the taste and overstimulate the taste to your taste buds as much as possible, so you eat a lot of this food, is normally people will find after a short while, because it's not very, nourishing and it's giving you a lot of garbage stuff that you really don't want within your body you can actually get very hungry soon after so then that is normally going to end up in you eating more calories throughout the whole day so that is something to be aware of but this is not an issue with whole foods whatsoever because companies aren't messing around with it to make it as addictive as possible and it's been shown what they even do to food it affects the brain, when they've done brain scans, scientists out there and done research on this, it activates the brain in the way that certain recreational or even illegal substances out there will affect your brain. So that's why it can be very, very addictive, just like gambling and many other different things as well. So these companies are very clever. They don't care about your health or whether you get obese at all. They just wanna maximize their profits. And they do a very good job at doing that by getting you hooked on it. But yeah, it's obviously not the best thing for people's weight. And this is just what has happened to Thai people, just like pretty much every other country that has become very heavily influenced by the Western world and had these huge Western corporate companies that are these food companies that sell an abundance of processed foods. So that's it from me in this video. Got any questions? Leave them down below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe to receive a lot more videos like this from me on a regular basis. So as always, enjoy the rest of your day, make the most of it, and catch you on the flip side. Peace.